Josh Hendricks. I am the founder of the KYHA and a licensed hemp farmer through uh, my company Hendricks Hemp, which is operated on my, my grandfather's farm, Mayflower Farm. He's actually sitting up here. He didn't like it when I point him out, but I have to when he comes to these things, right? Um, but now, uh, as of November, I am also the director of business development for CV Sciences. And as I also mentioned earlier, CV Sciences, some of you may still know as Canavest. Uh, we did go through a name change a couple months ago because, uh, quite frankly, there's like a thousand companies with the word Canna in their name. And it's hard when you're not in the marijuana industry and you go to the bank and they look at you funny. So we became CV Sciences. Um, we are we're a life science company and uh, you'll see why in a little bit, but that's because we see this as a natural supplement. Uh, we see this, I take turmeric every day as well as my CBD pill. Don't think of it any differently. Uh, and we wanna see it regulated that way and we wanna see the market driven that way. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Um, I always show this slide because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of what I do, regardless of the company that's in front of me, is because I believe in this crop and I believe that this is the state to do it. I say all the time, we're the Silicon Valley of hemp. I mean, we're sitting here in the Stanford, in our Stanford for this industry, right? So we have all the resources at our hand. We've all talked about the KDA and Commissioner Comer, and now Commissioner Quarles is going to support us. Um, so when I went to California and we were trying to figure out what my role was going to be in all this, they didn't, I mean, I kind of told them what my role was going to be because all they cared about was being in Kentucky because all they care about is having a domestic supply source. As Chad talked about earlier, um, we do have product and it is not Kentucky proud and it is not domestically produced. Everything is done in Europe and it's shipped to California and we refine that material into our products no different than David Bronner does when he gets his hemp from Canada or John Rulike does with Nativa when he gets his hemp from Canada or from any, somebody getting it from Australia or whatever. We took a legal method five years ago to getting material that we could use to produce CBD products and we tried to kind of develop the market that way. So we're in Kentucky because we believe in this. Uh, we do not have an employee in Colorado. We do not have an employee in Tennessee. We do not have an employee in Europe anymore. Um, we have some consultants in Europe still because we have a pretty big market and we're, we, we're hoping that the U.S. production can catch up to our demand as we move forward. But um, we're going to drum that down a little bit. Uh, we, we grow 3,000 acres of hemp in Germany and uh, the goal is to grow none as early as next year. So my hope is that all of these guys succeed. You know, when I first got into this business, there was a lot of competition, a lot of, well, I don't want to tell you what I'm doing because what if you try to do the same thing? I promise it doesn't matter. There's enough to go around. There was plenty of tobacco companies back in the day and we're all doing things slightly differently. So, and I think working together is the best way to do it. Hence the KYHA. So we just want to bring it home. Uh, personally, that's a big passion of mine. And for our company, you know, it's, no, it's a no brainer, right? If we can have Kentucky grown hemp and U.S. Kentucky processed hemp, so it has a Kentucky Proud label on it, um, there's a really good chance that our fancy laboratory in San Diego won't be in San Diego anymore, or that we'll have one there and one here. Um, that's the kind of potential that we would like to bring to the state, and that's the reason we're involved with so many things here. Uh, I mentioned the products we have. Uh, you probably saw the display in the back, and if you've got your goodie bag yet, um, if you haven't, make sure you get one. There's a sample of the peppermint spray in there for everybody. Um, we've got a lot of marketing materials and stuff in there too, so make sure to check that out. But these, this is our, our product line. I mentioned we're CV Sciences now, but our product line is Plus CBD Oil. So if you go to pluscbdoil.com, uh, you can purchase any of our products. That is the only time you will ever hear, hear me sell any of our products, and you'll see why in a minute, because I, 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 I don't have to do any selling. That's not my job. There's a reason they put domestic production on my title, because that's my only focus, is figuring out how to, do, how to accomplish what they accomplish in Germany. We may not replicate it. We may tweak it. We may completely change it. But how to accomplish getting the same material we get from Germany, from Kentucky, and I mean, to be honest with you guys, as much as it would break my heart if it's not from Kentucky, but someone else beats you to it, we're probably gonna get it from there too. And we may need multiple supply sources, but I'm very confident that we're gonna get there first and you know, I'm the only one working on this and I'm not anywhere but Kentucky, so I think it'll probably end up happening here. Um, all of our uh, 
products have these total plant complex formulas. These certificates are available upon request. Anytime you purchase a product, you can even get more specific results of what's in your product. Um, that, that is something we, are, we stand firmly by. We want people to understand and to feel comfortable with what they're putting in their bodies. Same thing for the gold. We also do have bulk supply. Um, you know, companies buy this and repackage it or uh, buy in bulk, kind of Costco style, I guess. Um, either way, we certainly have that available. Uh, I did want to talk for a second about the rapid rise of CBD. For those of you that aren't familiar with Leafly, Leafly is a cannabis news source. Um, they're obviously focused on marijuana and they're, they're really, you know, for just because Colorado based, right? Well, you can see the amount of clicks or amount of searches they were getting on these four categories has rapidly increased and CBD has become the most popular, right? Well, they reached out to us and said, what can you tell us about CBD? How is hemp involved? How is it different, et cetera? So we've been providing them with a lot of information. Um, we're kind of their go-to source for hemp uh, things. So I definitely, you know, check out Leafly. Uh, don't check out the other stuff, but just go to Leafly and type in hemp and uh, he should be good. Um, the reason Leafly has become so popular in the cannabis industry is because they took out a $200,000 ad in the New York Times. Within a week, they were the most mainstream resource for information on cannabis, and that goes for hemp too. Um, if you're familiar with the Kentucky Hempsters, they write, uh, I guess, exposés about all of the hemp industry except for CBD, and uh, our company kind of handles that from a scientific standpoint because we have a lot of really smart people, a lot smarter than me on staff that know how to talk about and write about this kind of stuff. Um, it kind of exploded, you know, we saw weed in the mag in, on uh, National Geographic and talking about cannabis research in Time Magazine. And while this was all cannabis related, this did not hurt CBD. And it especially didn't hurt hemp derived CBD, CBD because a lot of people don't want to consume marijuana. The reality, I mean, there's obviously it's a big market, Colorado's doing great, but a lot of people want to feel better and have the, the benefits of taking a vitamin-like supplement without thinking that they've done pot, for lack of a better word. So the, the increase in marijuana attention has actually only helped our company. Um, you know, we're, we're all over the marketplace with CBD products and we get stories all the time from our retailers that say people came in heard about it, what it was. We train our, the retailers. They told them about how it wasn't marijuana. They bought it that day and they're coming back weekly to get it. So we actually benefited from this being in the CBD industry. And I think if you take the right route with CBD, you can benefit too. It's all about the information you're putting out there. As I mentioned, we're in a lot of stores. Um, we're in over 500 uh, mom, you know, kind of mom and pop health food stores. Um, 350 health practitioner offices throughout the country, and obviously we do a lot of online sales. To give you an idea, um, it's, it, it's, this is all available online, all of our numbers are, but uh, in the, the past two years, we've been in the low eight figures in revenue both years, and it's only growing. Um, so we're obviously selling products. People are interested in this, and we feel like we've kind of got to jump on the marketplace. So <clears throat> we're pretty happy with that. Um, we, the reason I don't have to do any selling is because we don't do any selling. We have a sales team that goes out and does that. Um, they, they're the ones that infiltrate this market. They're, by trade, they're natural products uh, salesmen, so they know how to do this. They have relationships with these types of, type of stores, and that's how we're able to get into these type of businesses, and it's only growing. Um, we were very close with Vitamin Shop, and um, the FDA kind of ruined that for us, um, but so that's a battle we'll continue to fight as long as we have to. Um, so, as I mentioned, what we do in Europe is full traceability. Um, our motto is seed to shelf, trademark, don't steal it. Uh, um, but we, uh, in Europe, the hemp is grown. We contract about 3,000 acres. Uh, it's harvested and dried and pelletized and then extracted. And all of that's done in Europe. All right, so they, they import this paste. We take it and we refine it into our products that you've seen in the back and saw on that slide earlier. Um, my job is to not have to have the third one down on the left there. So if we can figure out how to grow it and harvest it, and we can figure, and someone can figure out how to extract it to get it to our specifications, we'll, we will not have to do step three. And all of our products will be made with domestically grown hemp. 
Um, everything after that we do, and I'll kind of run through that uh, as we go through here. But as you can see, we're not, we're not growing tomato plants. Um, it looks nothing like marijuana. We're using big combines. And if anybody wants this combine in the US, talk to me afterwards, because it's gonna take more than just my projects to get it here. Um, but we're, you know, it's an industrial grow and it's, it's very commercialized. Uh, they are subsidized in Europe, so it's a lot easier to convince them to do this, especially when they don't have to get off their combine. But um, that's what we're working on. That's what we're, why we're, you know, invested in the UK research, invested in Murray State, Kentucky State, um, in all in different ways and why we're working with poor farmers and just continuing to expand our knowledge of will these varieties grow here? If not, what will? And then how do we get it from step A, B, and C to where we, where we get it and we can test it and then put it into our product. Um, like I said, it's a very dense grow. This is not done in plastic. There's no irrigation. Uh, you know, it's not your, uh, it doesn't, it's not a, a marijuana grow or a hemp grow that looks like a marijuana grow. And that's not, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but it's just not our business model. And as I said earlier, that doesn't mean this is how we'll do it here. I'm not the guy that's probably going to figure that out, but whoever figures out the best way to do it here and the cheapest way to do it here and the way we can get the most value for the farmer and the processor and then obviously ourselves on the retail end, that's the model we're going to use. We just haven't figured that out yet. Um, you know, I, I got a couple of pictures here. Uh, would you guess that this is in Europe or in Kentucky? Anybody? Kentucky? How about this one? Neither one of those are in America. <laughs> and my field was not anywhere near that big or that pretty. Um, but I have faith that this year, my, or next year, my slides will have some really pretty Kentucky hemp in them, right? Uh, that's the goal. These are kind of my inspirational slides. I really just stole these from another presentation that another guy made. But uh, I figured I'd show them just because I did think they were cool. The, again, this is the kind of machinery we're talking about. Uh, you can see that hemp there is 10, 12 feet tall. Um, they're combining off the tops and it's shooting over into a dump truck or a trailer and the back of the combines cutting the stalks and they use that for fiber. Um, but we're taking the flowers, drying and pelletizing and then extracting. Uh, as I mentioned, the extraction does it, is done in Europe. We use a award-winning extractor. Uh, we have a great relationship with them. It's just, I mean, the reality is it costs more to import, but it also, you lose value. I mean, if you go to the store and you have a choice to buy Kentucky Proud hemp oil or hemp oil, if you buy it, you probably know that it's from Europe, you're going to buy Kentucky Proud or domestically grown hemp. So um, we do have a great relationship with these guys and they are top of the line. Um, and we'll still continue to work with them. We'll probably in a consulting role here and there, uh, maybe bring a few guys over to help us figure some stuff out. But the goal is to not work with these guys anymore. If they were here, I would say that. Um, they know that. Uh, so how can CV have all that done here? Well, a couple things. This is a quote that uh, Machiavelli said. And he said, there's nothing more difficult to carry out, nor more doubtful of success, nor more dangerous to handle than to initiate a new order of things. For the reformer has enemies and all those who profit by the old order. Hemp is this, this, def, this quote is him, all right? There's a lot of other parties out there, regardless of fiber, uh, grain, or CBD, that do not want to see him succeed. Obviously, the pharmaceutical industry would be one of those right now. Um, anybody that makes any other type of natural materials that Trey makes, or chia seeds, or things like that. Um, so I, thought, I saw this, and I thought, what better way to intro into how do we do this here? And the reality is, and a couple of people have said it, it's going to be really freaking hard, right? Like we're starting an industry from scratch. One of my friends said, man, that's crazy. You know, it's obviously super hard to start a business. And I was like, yeah, it's even harder to start one in an industry that doesn't exist. So um, we understand that we're not there yet, but we want to do everything we can as a company and as a manufacturer to help Kentucky get there. Um, good question. Is hemp, derived, is hemp derived CBD a pharmaceutical or natural product? Obviously, in my opinion, it would be a natural product. There's a couple of reasons why. Um, you can see the difference here uh, with the main point being the carbon footprint. All right. So 
if you look at the outdoor hemp grow versus indoor marijuana grow, and trust me, if hemp, if CBD goes medicinal, there will not be any of that grown outside because it's medicinal. It would have to be completely controlled. And this is what it'll look like. Now, if you think about the power and the water that's going into that, while it's obviously beneficial or they wouldn't be doing it, it's a super drain on the environment. That's not something we're about as a company. That's not something I'm about as a person. And something that I really want to, to hit home with you guys is that we don't see this as a grow. We see this as a commodity. We see this as a crop. And we don't want to spend $6 billion a year in electricity. Because what farmer spends money on electricity, right? We want to come in, utilize farmers like the ones we're working with, minus myself, um, that know what they're doing and are, are innovative and can and, and know how to farm and the best practices and just have that green thumb about them. Uh, that's, that's the people we want to work with. We don't, we're not hiring growers from Colorado. We're not hiring consultants from Maine. We're focused on how do we get you guys as farmers to grow for us and have, have a, a purchase order for you that guarantees you're going to get paid as a farmer and get paid the right amount. Like I said, you can't do this in a greenhouse. Um, that actually is my farm in Kentucky. Uh, I'm proud of it. But the, um, again, the point here is that while there will certainly be seed propagation and there will certainly be tobacco type methods used with starting in greenhouses, we're not saying, ah, oh, get rid of your greenhouse and only plant seeds outside or anything crazy like that. We're just saying for this to be as successful as we see it and for all these different industries, the three different value chains that we talked about to be successful, there's going to have to be massive amounts of hemp grown, not just in Kentucky, but in this region and in this country. And that's what we want to support, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, the way we're going to do that is through research, number one. Um, we, Leah Black, who's the grad, grad, grad student here at UK studying CBD production, um, she's on a scholarship that we pay for um, every year, and she's doing some phenomenal research that I'm really excited about this year, and we're very proud. And as a UK alum, I'm pretty, pretty happy about it. Um, that guy on the right, he's got a face for radio, but um, he, uh, he grew hemp last year, and um, he's going to grow again this year, but his focus is really on working with the other farmers. Um, you know, how do we grow? My farm's only 100 acres. We're never going to, unless I start buying up a bunch of land or leasing up a bunch of land, I'm not going to be a huge hemp producer, um, but I do want to push that forward. So we're working with three other farms besides mine throughout the state, one down in Murray, uh, Joseph Kelly and his company or his farm, West Kentucky Hemp. Uh, he's a big time farmer and uh, really, really excited about what we're doing, uh, which goes along great because we also work with Murray State and Tony Brannon. Uh, we're gonna provide them with a small scholarship and some uh, seeds. And then we're also working with Kentucky State and Frankfurt, just a small seed donation to help them have some more varieties to trial. Um, but so we've got Joseph down in Murray, uh, myself in Mount Sterling. We've got the Hancocks from Paris and Stone Farm who are here. Um, they'll probably never be as famous for growing hemp as they are for their thoroughbreds, but we're happy to have them uh, <laughs> nonetheless. And they're still gonna be famous, trust me. We'll get a lot of pictures out there, it'll be cool. Um, oh, and then the last thing is on this one is the Kentucky businesses. Um, you know, we're, we're the only member, uh, the first hemp company that has joined the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. Um, we, uh, we really want to make this a Kentucky thing. And if, for us to not have to do those first couple steps, there has to be an extractor that we can purchase materials from. There has to be a pelletizer. There has to be a dryer. There has to be all these steps in place. So we're rooting for you guys. We really hope we can purchase material from you in the next, you know, next couple months. Um, one of the things, so once we are able to purchase that material, uh, we would ship it to San Diego, our state-of-the-art laboratory. It is pretty, uh, pretty cool. I've been out there, um, again, way over my head, a lot of scientists walking around. And, uh, but that's something that, you know, we're, we're trying to get Kentucky on board so we don't have to import. Well, if we can get if we're growing so much in Kentucky that it makes sense not to ship it to California, well, then we'll put a lab in Lexington. So that's my dream. Um, whether that happens or not, it kind of depends on this, this industry and how it goes. Um, the proof is in third-party testing. This is something we're working on with a lot of companies here in Kentucky and throughout the country on standardized testing. Uh, one thing we do is we, get, we do our own tests, we get the necessary tests, and then we do a third-party test. And sometimes we do fourth and fifth because 
getting this stuff from Europe, quite frankly, um, you know, from what I know about it, it, sometimes it can be a mess. And sometimes you can send it to 10 different places and you can get 10 different results. So some standardized testing procedures is very necessary and something I've been advocating hard for uh, with a couple of the groups we work with. Um, as I said, you know, seed the shelf, that's what we want to do. Um, that's, our, that's our business model and we don't want to jump in and start doing steps one and two. We want to be involved. We want to be able to trace it. We want to trust the people we're working with. But we're focused on the, the rest of that there. And uh, we're hoping to be able to use your hemp, your hemp, your hemp, whoever's hemp, um, as soon as this year. And once we have your hemp and we have our, put it in our products, Kentucky Grown Hemp will be at all, all 500 stores, all 350 practitioner offices, um, all around the country, which is only good for the rest of you. If you think you're a CBD company, it's bad for you that we're getting out there. It's not because people will know what your product is if they see it in more stores. Competition is good, right? Um, the last thing I want to say, well, not the last thing, second to last thing, is uh, responsibilities and communication. There's a lot of bad info out there, and you certainly can't believe everything you read. Um, that's, the, that's all I'm going to say about it, but I would take everything you read with a grain of salt and uh, try to do more in-depth research. There's a lot of good clinical studies and things out there. Um, I mentioned Leafly earlier, or you can check out our website. A lot of good information, and I hope that other CBD companies will do the same. Um, I mentioned the work we're doing. These are the organizations we're members of, obviously this organization and the national one. Uh, the other one who you're going to hear from the, uh, is the Kentucky Hemp Industry Council. This is our lobbying group. Uh, some of the most prominent names in the hemp industry from around the country and around the state are members of this. The stuff that we're getting done is not getting done by writing your congressman a letter or an email. It's getting done by a group of us, you know, nor a group of us non-marijuana folks going to D.C., talking to our representatives, sitting down with Senator McConnell and getting stuff done. So please, please, please. If you're not already a member of this group, join. If you're not a member of the Kentucky Hemp Industry Council, you can talk to me or Russell um, after this, and we'll, we'll certainly let you know how to do it. I also recommend the National Hemp Industry Association. They are in Colorado, but they're, very, they're starting to become kind of a well-oiled machine in terms of organization, and I think that's good for the industry. So, again, um, thank you so much for having me. I think I talked for an hour, but um, I'm happy to do it, and I hope you guys learned something.